Hello and welcome to some cheeky CD revision. I'm Connor Durkin. And I'm Will Khan and welcome to part A of Core 3 of Wahey Productions Maths Revision. This video has all you need to know for that evasive A star. But if you have any questions, you're very welcome to ask down there in the comments. On with the A level. Beginning with yet more algebra, because there's Ooh, always, yes. more, always algebra. more algebra. You always. should know by now how to add fractions and therefore how to take away fractions. But at A level, they step it up by giving you mean fractions, like this one. Now, there are a few tricks you need to know. The first one is just cancelling. When you multiply, you just multiply the top and bottom. So with something like this, it's like squishing them together. So any like terms on top and bottom, you can cancel like so. And you've got your answer without really doing anything. That's the kind of math that I can get behind. If it is division, then it's the same as multiplying, but with one over the second term, or just swapping them around. Swapsies. Some other tricks uh, is that you can make sure you factorise as much as possible, or adding and subtracting. Uh, for adding and subtracting, sorry, this means that you can get the lowest possible denominator. And for, for multiplying mul and dividing, you're more, li more likely to be able to cancel down. Yep. You also need to n be able to do hard division. Uh, we covered back back in C2, so if you want a shortcut, go look at part A of, C of Core 2. It's a you know, little, little guide there. Oh, yeah. oh, and please don't use the example on screen now. It's from an early draft of the video, and it's actually r wrong. Yeah, the, the remainder is wrong. It should be wrong. 10, I think. Right. The only difference is uh, now in C3 is that when you're writing your remainder, which I didn't say then, write out your answer plus the remainder over whatever you were originally dividing. Which See, isn't that handy? And See, let's move uh, swiftly onwards. Oh, and very quickly, they uh, I remember a question from a 2013 paper is that they gave you sort of a general thing like that, and it looked really weird. It's just that written. You'll know if you look at the paper. It's just okay. Move on, Connor. To quick. mappings and functions. Mappings and functions, and there are two things that you care about: the domain and the range of a function. Usually you're talking about x as the domain and y as the range. The domain can also be called the independent variable as the values only depend on x. And the range, the dependent variable, as the values depend on their x values. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, uh, the mapping puts the domain onto the range and can most easily be defined as an equation, really. But every function is a mapping, but not every mapping is a function. Ooh, a function can be one-to-one -one or many-to-one. So if you're geometrically minded, linear or quadratic, etc. But it isn't, what isn't a function, sorry, is a one-to-many mapping, like a sideways quadratic, or a many-to-many -many mapping, like a circle. Yes. Good squircle. Yes. Carry on. A composite function is like a function of a function, like this example. Isn't that nice? That is lovely. That. So if a function maps a domain onto a range, what if you're only given the range? <gasps> well, you can map it back. <sighs> uh, it's... It's an inverse yeah. function, and there are only two ways you can go about it, really. really. Firstly, you can do it algebraically by rearranging to get x on its own on one side, then just swapping the x value for the y value, and any y values for x values. Nice, nice and simple. simple. So y equals x plus 2 becomes x equals y minus 2. Just swap the letters, the inverse function is y equals x minus 2. Da -da -da -da. And graphically, just reflect it in the line y equals x. Simple it's enough. very easy. And let me assure you, doing that brings all sorts of fun. I don't think that word thing means what you think it means. Okay. It, it, it Next. Doesn't. Moving on to graphs of functions. Now, I was going to do all of this again, but everything you need to know is all the way back in part B of our Core 1 video. So go have a nosy at that. The only difference is that you have to get used to multiple transformations with nastier graphs, but it's just a practice thing. So after this video, go pop off and go do some Go now. Revision. Now. Right now. Don't do go it. now. Do it now. Watch the rest of this video. Watch the rest of the video, then do it now. Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> Next, modules and more graphs. Modules? Modulus. On to bigger and better things. Where we don't deal with x, we deal with the modulus of x. Here we make all values positive, also known as finding the magnitude, absolute value, or modulus. modulus. As far as drawing graphs go, when you're modding x on its own, drawing from right to left, you reflect it in the y-axis. Think of it, simply put as I can, the graph is only is valid with positive x's, and that's the bit of the graph after x is zero. So, so you sort of do it again. You put a mirror, uh, the only way I can explain it is you put a mirror where the y-axis is and look at it from the positive uh, x-axis side, and then you draw it again. There's a couple of examples that should help clarify things. Yes. Uh... An easier way of thinking of it is any negative values plot as positive, and you'll soon get the hang of it. It's very simple what you get used if to. If the whole function function is modded, then it's the same graph as it would normally be, but any bits below the x-axis plot as positive, like so. Think of it maybe as folding a piece of paper where the x-axis is. Ah, good. For, yeah, for the x user mirror and for the function, just fold it. It's easy. There we are. See, that's some nice tips. It's actually helpful. Just the tips. 
Now, when it comes to having a modulus bits when solving equation inequalities, I'm going to say one thing. Draw a graph, bro. Or sis. You may have been taught tricks or long way rounds or short way rounds, and by all means, do that. But if you draw a graph and know what the inequality is, then you will be fine. If in doubt, then just use two equations for one line. So the original and the one that's valid for the reflection or the fault or whatever yeah. you've done. And that's it for part A. Join us next Is time really? for some differentiation, exponentials and iterative methods. That sounds riveting. It does. I've been Connor Durkin. And I've been Will Khan. And you've been watching Call 3 Part A. Any questions, please do ask in the comments. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. See you next time. Bye-bye.